Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Daily Six. We're walking verse by verse, thought by thought, through the book of Acts. Grab your Bibles, Acts chapter 6, verses 8 through 15. Let's finish up this pretty short chapter, and we're going to ask the Holy Spirit, what do you have to say to us? Where do we fit in this story? So Acts chapter 6, verses 8 through 15, read it, pause the video, read it, and then let's, uh, let's soak in the Holy Spirit, see what he has to say to us. Come on with me. All right, so have you read Acts chapter 6, verses 8 through 15? Pretty short chapter, right? So if you haven't read it yet, pause the video. Serious, pause it, read it, soak in it, let the Holy Spirit talk to you, and then come back and let's look at it together. All right, so we learned yesterday that uh, the apostles, under the direction of the Lord, had appointed um, various men, um, possibly in some other contexts, men and women, who were full of the Holy Spirit to engage in acts of service and acts of supporting people in need. And one of those was a fellow named Stephen. And we read yesterday that uh, they chose Stephen, who was a man, the scriptures say, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. He was filled with the Holy Spirit, just as Jesus had instructed his disciples and you and me uh, to seek after this filling, this baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, what's, what I find interesting as we read this text is that he was, um, he was called and gifted to serve those that are in need in the church. So a, a serving gift, a helps gift. But he also was a witness to the gospel. He also was powerfully used by God to uh, expose the gospel to the community. Look at it in verse eight. Stephen, a man who was full of God's grace and power, he did great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. So friends, here's something. Remember in this Daily Six video series and searching out the book of Acts, we're looking for the Holy Spirit to talk to us about ourselves. Where do I fit in the story? If I were this person, uh, what might God be saying to me? And so here's the thing that strikes me as I, as I pray about this and listen. It strikes me that we each have our different spiritual gifts, right? For me, one of those spiritual gifts is teaching. That's why I'm doing what I do. And you at least keep coming back to these video series, right? So there's a gift that God has given me through the Holy Spirit. And that's probably the primary thing that I am supposed to contribute to the body of Christ, along with maybe some leadership gifts and apostolic gifts to, to lead the church. But on top of whatever the spiritual gift God has given you, maybe it's a gift of administration, maybe it's a gift of serving, maybe it's a gift of helps, maybe it's, um, you know, uh, some other type of, you know, what you might think of as a less uh, upfront gift. Others of you might have a gift of evangelism or whatever. So, So whatever your spiritual gift is, whatever God has called you to do, and yesterday we asked the Holy Spirit reveal that and surrender ourselves to that calling. Whatever your gifting is and whatever it is God's called you to do, there is also the call and and the generalized filling of the Holy Spirit to be a witness, to be an example, to be a light in this darkness. And so that's exactly what uh, Stephen did. Now, verse 9, we learn there's a lot of opposition that rose up to him, right? People, religious people have problems with uh, people who are filled, filled with the Holy Spirit and they're operating because they, they can't control it. It's something beyond themselves. It's not, it's not manageable, right? But look at what happens to these men who oppose them. Verse 10, well, latter part of verse 9, these men began to argue with Stephen, so they're, they're pushing back. But, verse 10, they could not stand up against his wisdom, or notice this, or the spirit by whom they spoke, by whom he spoke. They, the, those in opposition, those who were opposed, could not stand up to the wisdom of Stephen or, this is important, or the Holy Spirit by whom he spoke. All right, so here's what I'm thinking uh, as I'm looking at this text and listening and thinking about how does it fit in my context. All right, you and I get it. We're part of what a lot of scholars would call a post-Christian culture that our nation and our society used to really re- revere Christianity back a couple hundred years ago and then last 50 to 100 years, they began to find Christianity to be irrelevant. And then really in the last decade or so, uh, sociologists and, and, and uh, historians would say that the American culture has moved into a post-Christian culture where not only do they find Christianity irrelevant, they find Christianity offensive. 
right? You've you've caught this, haven't you? That people often think of biblical Christians who are standing on spiritual truth, scriptural truth. They might even call us bigots, or they might call us hate mongers, because we don't um, we don't affirm, we don't step in and agree with things that are sinful that are not in alignment with the with the uh, revelation of God in Scripture. All right. So you and I are part of that culture where there is opposition to us. So we might be tempted to shrink back, to be nervous, to be afraid to talk about Jesus in our life. But if we are filled with the Holy Spirit, as Jesus instructed his disciples to seek after Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he said, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the earth. So here's the thing I think the Lord is showing me. As a part of this post-Christian opposed society and culture, opposed to Christianity. I need to not fear that opposition if I am walking in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, because the power of God in the Holy Spirit will equip me to be the right kind of witness. This doesn't mean you need to purposely get weird and go pushing stuff on, on, on people, pushing Jesus, cramming Jesus down people's throats. But what it does mean is that you are asking and trusting that I am asking and trusting the Holy Spirit to lead us into the right conversations with the right people and to trust, to rest in the, in the truth that the Holy Spirit is going to be the one to empower me. Uh, and I love verse 15. Those who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen and they saw his face was like that of an angel. Would you give God six more minutes? This video is going to end in about 20 seconds. Give God six more minutes and ask him to pour out your Holy, his Holy Spirit into you, give you the face of an angel, confidence to stand strong in your witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, that's it for this week. We're going to pick up Acts chapter 7 next week on the Daily Six. So come on back and join us.